Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy Masters 25? Masters 25 is the latest Masters set, coinciding with Magic's 25th anniversary. It seeks to contain cards from across Magic's 25-year history, including cards from every set, with an emphasis on nostalgia as well as the usual Masters aims of providing needed reprints all while maintaining an enjoyable draft environment. But like all master sets, it still carries with it the higher than usual MSRP of $9.99, and with a higher price comes higher customer expectations. Masters 25 boasts big, but does the end product swing in for a critical hit or fizzle out when opened? Let's take a look. Master sets have always been designed with two primary goals a great draft experience and providing needed reprints for formats like modern and to a lesser extent Legacy and Commander. These goals, however, have often been competing with one another, with the requirements of a balanced draft environment often being the reason that unneeded reprints have made up the bulk of the cards in these sets. And with Masters 25, the added goal of a nostalgia set puts even more strain on this product, and this review will examine each of these elements to see how well, if at all, they've each been accomplished. Let's start with the big one, financial value. A Masters 25 box contains three mythics on average, and it is highly unlikely two of these mythics will be the same card. There are a total of 15 mythics in Masters 25, the most expensive of which is Jace, the Mind Sculptor, valued at about $96 at the time of launch. If you are expecting a Jace in every box, an Imperial Recruiter in every box, or even a Chalice of the Void in every box, you are going to be in for a disappointment. Those are just three of 15 possible Mythics. And you might even end up with the $1 Tree of Redemption or a $2 Acroma. Out of these 15 Mythics, seven are valued at or above the MSRP of $9.99. In addition to this, cards like Imperial Recruiter which is the second and most expensive mythic at $63, are going to drop in price significantly due to demand being largely, if not entirely, for commander and cube players. Cards like Recruiter being mythic instead of rare, and cards like Tree of Redemption being included at all are entirely due to the needs of the limited environment. Keep that in mind for later. What about at the rare level? Of the 53 rares in this set, only 10 are valued at or above $9.99 at the time of launch, and five of those 10 are the reprinted Lorwyn filter lands, which are only going for about 10 to $11 each. The most valuable rare is Rashad and Port, a legacy staple selling for $42, followed by Blood Moon selling at 18. From there, as I said, the drop is dramatic, and most of the remaining eight rares are all hovering very close to the $10 border. At the uncommon level, the most valuable cards are Curse Catcher at $480 each and Street Wrath at $390. There are five more uncommon cards at or above $2 in value, meaning a total of seven uncommon cards worth above $2 each. At the common level, two are worth a dollar or more. Relentless Rats at $150 and Nettle Sentinel at a dollar. Yay, popper! So looking at the entire set out of a total of 274 cards, 17 are worth the cost of the pack at $9.99 or more. 17 out of 274. If we have that criteria to being worth just half the cost, cost of a pack at $4.99, 21 cards in total are now included, which is a very minor increase for a very substantial cut. But what about the theme of nostalgia? Masters 25 has included cards from every set throughout Magic's history. These cards are meant to be the memorable and iconic cards from their respective sets, reprinted here with a set watermark in the text box. But something has gone wrong in terms of cards selected. While many are indeed great blasts from the past, others are quizzical inclusions. When people think of Innistrad, considered to be one of the greatest sets in Magic's history, they do not think of Fiend Hunter, Murder of Crows, or Tree of Redemption. Cards like Snapcaster Mage, Liliana of the Veil, and Delver of Secrets are what they think back to. And yes, the inclusion of Tree of Redemption as representative of Innistrad has been brought up ad nauseum already. But it's not just this one instance that has soured many to the set. It's not just Oh, because of Tree of Redemption, Masters 25 has somehow gone wrong. No, Tree of Redemption is simply incredibly indicative of what has gone 
wrong elsewhere in the set. Fencing Ace is not what people think of when they think of Return to Ravnica, nor Living Wish from Judgment, nor Arcane Denial from Alliances. Obviously, a lot of this is highly subjective. I absolutely acknowledge that. And the need for a balanced draft environment is going to be important, lest you have a set where blue is overwhelmingly superior to any other color. But when Murder of Crows is the Innistrad card instead of Snapcaster Mage, whether it is because Snapcaster would have broken the draft format or simply made the box too financially valuable, I can't help but ask, so what? So what if changing Murder of Crows for Snapcaster and Perilous Murr for Karn Liberated would have made draft imbalanced? People are paying $30 to $45, depending on prize support, to draft this anyway. So the number of times the average player will draft this set is 0 to 1. I'd rather have Blue be unbalanced and crack a Snapcaster than crack a Murder of Crows. But let's talk about draft. In terms of draft structure and gameplay, Masters 25 doesn't appear to have clear themes or signpost synergies between multiple cards, and relies more on finding two-card combos to build or augment your draft deck around. But even this is not entirely consistent, as for example, a tenuous cycling deck can be constructed, but overall the draft strategies here are cloudy at best. Again, this is just being launched now, and so it is hard to make a fully analytical statement on the draft gameplay, but I do feel confident in saying, having at least drafted this once myself, that gone are the old Masters set feels of drafting a cube that was present in Modern Masters 2013, 15, as well as Eternal Masters. Nonetheless, Masters 25 does have a well-designed limited environment where color and power levels are evenly matched. But when this is a premium draft experience priced at $10 a pack, is that really the draft experience you want? Remember, one draft of Masters 25 is on par with two to possibly even three of Dominaria. Okay, I have asked this question since my very first Masters review video, and I'm going to ask it again and again and keep asking it. Why are these packs $10 each? What determined Wizards of the Coast setting the price there? Boost Booster packs that aren't worth their own cost is nothing new. They have always been a gamble. You should always draft instead of cracking packs to build decks. But there is no factor that I can see that requires such a price tag, especially not with Masters 25. Even the excuse of because the consumer imagined EV of the cardboard within is so high falls flat because, well, there's not really that much expected value here. And I have also said before, and I will also say again, that $10 boosters creates a terrible message to your consumer base because it is essentially saying to kids and teenagers who should be a big target for your product, as well as adults on tight incomes, young adults, the college students, that's very hard to afford, and so it's saying to them the message of maybe this isn't a product for you. Drafting this set without prize support is still going to cost $30, with prize support $40 to $45. Teenagers likely can't afford that. Heck, most people can't afford that. Times are tough these days, and this price is just arbitrary. It's not like it suddenly costs them more to print these packs. If you were walking away with modern staples to build your own decks with, or trade for the decks you wanted to build, then maybe that higher price tag could kind of be justified. But at this point, I really don't understand why these aren't the same cost as any other booster pack. At a certain point, Wizards of the Coast must choose between draft and reprints, or just abandon the master sets altogether. You cannot satisfy both masters, pun intended. You either reprint cards that actually see play, cards that are outrageously expensive on the secondary market and need to be more accessible, or you make a regularly priced draft set with some reprints. At $4 a pack, I doubt very much anyone would be unhappy with this set in terms of included reprints or unclear draft strategy. Final conclusion? 
Do not buy this product to crack packs for value or for needed cards for modern decks. If you have the opportunity to draft at a fair and affordable price and you can afford to do so, then this is really the best and I would say only way to engage this product. In terms of providing needed reprints, this master set, like many previous master sets, is an absolute fail. $240 would be better spent buying the specific singles you need for the decks you want to play. The need of draft have dramatically hindered the ability for this product to fulfill the need for reprints. But what about the reverse? On the level of providing a powerful, highly enjoyable draft environment, this master set is still somewhat ambiguous, but early gameplay indicates a more muted experience, with themes either unclear or absent entirely. While this is still a fun set to draft, it lacks the previous feel of powerful master sets. On the level of nostalgia, the set is satisfactory containing many memorable and iconic cards from throughout Magic's history, with the added touch of set watermarks, which I like a lot. But too many cards seem to be dubious inclusions, not representative of the sets from which they originate, and likely included more as a need to satisfy the draft or reprint goals. The overall grade here is a C. But in the end, that is just my grade. And now I want to hear from you, because yours is the grade that always matters most. Do you agree or disagree with my assessment? What grade would you give Masters 25 and why? Let me know in the comments below. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.